that uh, that really shows us what this is all about. So uh, we are just about ready to show more of what it's about, which is getting all unique weapons in the wasteland. But first, a $25 donation from Mice W, which is a haiku. More RGB is more FPS, so you need to donate for good. And it's now time to get all unique weapons in Fallout New Vegas. Banana Pegasus, show us how it's done. Hi, everybody. My name is Banana Pegasus, and this is Fallout New Vegas. All unique weapons. Uh, today, I'm joined by beautiful commentator. I'll allow him to introduce himself. Hi, my name is Noob Salmon. I also run this game. <laughs> All right. So what exactly is All Unique Weapons? It's collecting 40 unique weapons within the base game, so that doesn't include Wild Wasteland, DLCs, and it also doesn't include quest items, such as Loyal's Detonator, the missing laser pistol, and the camera. I'm sorry, AK, not in this run. All right. So chat, I'm going to need your guys' help to count these unique weapons. I'll let you guys know whenever we get to one. And... Let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start in, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. For the character name, what do we get for that? We are going to get trans rights. Perfect. Alrighty. So we'll go ahead and start in three, two, one. Let's go. Good luck. All right, so the first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna have two packs pop up. They're gonna give us the mercenary grenade launcher and the caravan shotgun. These are two weapons which we're gonna use in the run. We also have Doc Mitchell speaking in Italian. This is because Italian is seven seconds faster than English. And this is one of the only sections that we actually can't skip within the game. So we have the name popping up right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that ready. Alrighty. Alrighty. Now we're going to have the character creation cutscene come up where Doc Mitchell is going to give us a screen and we're just going to go ahead and skip through that really quick because our character doesn't really matter. The hitboxes is still the same no matter what we do with to it. And then right after this, oh, sorry. No reason for customization. We can just go ahead. Yeah. Uh, after this, we're going to be doing our first glitch of the game, which is quick saving and quick loading. We're going to be using that a lot throughout the run. I have that bound to Q and G because it's a lot faster than having it on F5 and F9. So right here, as soon as we gain control of our character, we're going to quick save, quick load twice, make our white swords a vigor test machine, quick save, quick load once, interact with it, put everything in the strength, quick save, quick load five times to skip the rest of Doc Mitchell's dialogue, pick up those stim packs for safety, and push them towards the chair. Now what we're gonna do here is pick all of the top dialogue option so that we're able to get speech, survival, and melee weapon, but we don't want melee weapon, so we're gonna switch that to science whenever it comes up. We're gonna use science for computers later on in the run to hack one terminal, and that'll allow us to have a better chance at it. So we picked good nature and heavy handed there. And now we're gonna go ahead and put the game into hardcore mode. So we can do our, another glitch called duping. Uh, Samen, if you wanna explain that. Yeah, so what we need uh, duping for is that we need some ammo and uh, you can only dupe with uh, items that have weight. So that's why we uh, picked the hardcore mode and we're gonna dupe some uh, steam packs. And this is basically just a glitch, a menu glitch that lets you do this. Um, yep, let me turn back. Yeah. So we're going to go to Chet right now and we're going to buy one ammo, one different ammo for the 357 revolver. And we're going to buy a shovel to dig a grave later on. We're going to kill Chet because he didn't spawn with a 357 revolver. And we're going to go ahead and bind everything right now and do another pretty crazy glitch in the game. Uh, this one is called Infinite Dashing. If you want to. Go ahead and explain that, Salmon. Yeah, so this is going to be really confusing. So if you're like photosensitive, just close your eyes. But what we're going to do is essentially abuse the game mechanics a bit. Um, if you buy this specific weapon, which has a one by one bullet animation, um, it has like a glitched move, uh, force movement at the end. And if you unequip the gun, um, the game just uh, slings you forward. That's the reload dashing part. 
And uh, with infinite dashing, you need to quick save, quick load, and cripple your legs. And for whatever reason, uh, if you do it at the right timing, you become a jet, and you can just uh, go through the wasting like this. You need to hold W. It's a really volatile glitch, and uh, you can see that um, we need to quick save, quick load, because if you lose air, this glitch won't work anymore. So that's why uh, it's uh, banana is quick save, quick loading a lot. Yeah, so right now we're making our way towards the first unique weapon of the game, which is the Annabelle. Annabelle is a missile launcher with a built-in guidance system, which allows us to use that a lot better than uh, most other weapons. It wouldn't take away as much AP. Uh, so that's number one right there. Now we're going to make our way towards the QE35 Matter Modulator, which is a reference to Marvin the Martian. And it's in the Repcon headquarters, which is just uh, right over here. In Norway, there is like a really hard lock to pick through uh, and can access this weapon, but we can just uh, clip through walls. That Banana mentioned that quick save recording is useful for skipping dialogue, but it's also useful for uh, going through walls because uh, that's how the game works, I guess. Yeah. And we're gonna use third person interaction to move our camera so that we can pick up that weapon. And we're also gonna hit the out of bounds trigger right there uh, called COC, which allows us to um, be teleported back in. So if you wanna explain COC a little bit better, Salmon. Yeah, so the game has a fail safe. If you go out of bounds too much, the game just resets you to the specified point because you don't wanna uh, fall in indefinitely. And usually uh, this point is at the beginning of like in indoor areas um, and it just lets you uh, skip backtracking and we're going to use it a lot in this run. Yep. So we picked up number two, the uh, QE35 Matter Modulator, and now we're going to go ahead and kill Driver Nephi right here. He's one of the three main fiends and that's also number three, Driver Nephi's Golf Driver. Uh, driver Nephi's, yeah, it's a uh, Nephi's Golf Driver. Sorry, it's an alternative of the Nine Iron. And we're just going to pick that up and reload dash our way towards the Sunset Sarsaparilla headquarters. Uh, another glitch that you guys might have noticed is um, stop hopping. So this right here is stop hopping. Salmon, if you want to explain that too. Yeah, this is, uh, we're going to use this in indoor areas mostly where we don't need reload dashing, but essentially it's called, also called circle jumping. You need to sort of flick your camera and also jump, but you need to release W in order to uh, in order this to, this to work and sort of like flicks you a bit far, uh, further and you can actually increase your speed by that. Uh, it's useful, as I mentioned, in indoor areas mostly. Yeah, so just areas that we don't reload dash. And this is number four right here. That's Pew Pew. Uh, the, the name that it has is because of the noise that it makes. Uh, and we picked up that hollow tape so that we can get more level ups here. Uh, yeah. It allows us to get a lot of level ups, uh, if you want to explain that too, Sam. Yeah, I just want to mention that uh, you probably remember if you played this game that there's this uh, quest, a really long quest where you need to pick up 50 uh, star bottle caps uh, for the Sunspreader bottles. And actually, uh, by clipping through that door, we actually access the very final objective of that quest. And since this is a really long quest, you get a lot of XP for that. Yeah, and now we're making our way towards Red Lucy. Red Lucy is going to give us a quest called Bleed Me Dry, where we have to go around the wasteland picking up more and more difficult eggs of these uh, creatures within the wasteland, such as giant mantises, all the way up to death claws, uh, which are some of the most dangerous, uh, <laughs> most dangerous creatures in the game. And we have to navigate our way through the sewer here and pick up Luke's find to go inside of a door where we're gonna have our fifth unique weapon, uh, the Humble Crundle, which is a lead pipe alternative. And we're gonna come up on another glitch here called Time Stop. So do you wanna explain that too, Salmon? Yeah, essentially it's another um, menu UI glitch where we actually can pull up our pip boy and you can see the screen where you can set your marker on the map. But if you do it fast enough, you can actually bring the big board back down. The game will be still paused, but you can move around. And this is useful for uh, essentially skipping really tough enemies and stuff like that. So 
That's why we did this. Yeah, it's just make sure that I don't get crippled by all of the ghouls that are right around there. And again, that was number five. Now we're going to make our way back towards Thorn. We're going to make our way towards Vault 22. Pick up Programmer's Digest so we can uh, use our science to hack a terminal a little bit later on. And I think this would be a good time for about one or two donations. All right, we have a $25 donation from Greg or Monkey that says, had to donate for my favorite Fallout game. Time for some pew pew in our AGDQ. My wife and I have had a wonderful time watching runs all week and seeing the amazing love shared by the GDQ community while we raise money for PCF. Much love and let's break some records. All righty, I think we have time for one more. All right, we have a $25 donation from Miss Scratch 1313 that says donating to appease the death clause. Fallout New Vegas hype. All righty, so we're going to be doing something there. It's called Stair Clips. It's one of the more common clips within the game just because it's a lot easier. And it is used in most to almost every single vault within this game. And we're going to quick save there, interact with the door from behind. If I can go ahead and get this line up. There we go. So we interact with this door from behind, do a reload dash around the corner to pick up our first giant mantis eggs, <laughs> and go back into this room, and quick save, quick load into here so I get pushed out of bounds. Come on. This one's a little bit more tricky and can be stubborn. There we go. I slid right through. I'm able to go ahead and fall right out of bounds, hit another COC, and lockpick this door, which has our next unique weapon right behind it. So this will be number six. Go ahead and grab this real quick. The AER-14 prototype. The developer and the creator of this weapon looked up actual laser physics from one of his buddies to put it on the back of the weapon to <laughs> make sense. And it's just a fun little fact that I thought was just going above and beyond with it. We're gonna reload dash out of here and I'm gonna wait here just to show you guys that if you can wait, you can also fast travel. So I'm gonna be doing that whenever I can to see if I can fast travel instead of pulling up my pit and wasting my time. Um, yeah, we're going- It's so, so, yeah, it's so banana, yeah, uh, reload dashing and like, it wasn't a, a small platform in the air, which is like invisible, so you can abuse that to, to just uh, fast travel from the air. It's kind of funny. Yeah, and that also brings us to reload dashing. Reload dashing is, uh, well, air dashing, sorry. Air dashing is whenever you reload dash and you get stuck up onto the air, you're on this little platform where you're able to just pretty much tap W and then you're able to do a reload dash, but it's a very, very tight window and you got to make sure that you do it quick. So now I'm going to go ahead and pop the meeting people, talk to Pauline Wins here, and convince her to give us the submachine gun by our speech check. We're going to talk to Sammy. We're going to say Sammy, well, Pauline told Sammy to give us the gun, and that is number seven, if I'm not mistaken. Seven, yeah. And yep. the safe combination for that is actually based off of the real life uh, Bonnie and Clyde, the crime couple, which those two are based off of in the game. I'm going to continue reload dashing over here, and we're going to come up on the YCS-186, which is just on a mercenary right here. Oh, I'm missing all my shots. There we go. All right, so YCS is number eight. Not really anything. Oh, game crash. That's the first crash. I'm surprised. Nice. So we'll get yeah, that. That happens a lot, sadly, yeah. in this run. Because you, the game has to load so many assets when you reload dash and you're going so fast that you essentially you just can't handle anymore sometimes. But it, it's not a big time loss. We're right back where we were. And we're just going to continue to reload dash our way over here. Another thing that can happen is it's called speed cripple. So if I quick save whenever I cripple my leg, it causes a animation to happen where it stacks two animation, the cripple animation, and the regular walking speed animation on top of each other. And this makes the game it makes your character move faster, but you can't reload dash, you can't stop up. It just ends up being a real nuisance. And 
the only way to fix it is by restarting the game. So if I do restart the game uh, intentionally, there's two reasons for that. It's because I need to fix my frames, or it's because I have speed cripple and I don't want it. And now we're gonna make our way towards number nine, which is pushing. A uh, pretty unique thing with the unique melee weapons, the developers wanted to go ahead and put the ammo type for some of these unique um, fist weapons, but the game files didn't support it, so they just pushed it out uh, without having the ammo type. Again, reload dash over there to get away from enemies, and I'm going to make my way towards Camp McCarran to uh, go around and snoop around in the NCR base. And if I'm not dismayed, can we gonna use Pushy actually for melee from now on? Right? Yes. Pushy is gonna be our main use of melee uh, within this run. So right now we're gonna make our way towards the concourse, uh, hack a terminal. And if you guys don't know hacking, you have to match up certain letters from words. But while that's going on, because it's probably gonna take me a while, uh, this would be a good time for a few donations. Absolutely. So we have a $10 donation from Jabo saying, Hey, Banana, hope you have a great run. Lots of love from the entire Fallout community. You've been a wonder to spend time with over the years, and I'm really proud of you for showcasing off the first non-any percent run of any Fallout game. And we have a $500 donation. Oh, do you want me to stop? Thank you, Jabo. Okay. Absolutely. Thank no, you so much. I just uh, to say so thank we you, do Java. have a $500 donation from Saturn New Hockey saying Fallout New Vegas is my favorite Fallout game. The last time I collected all unique weapons, it took me several months. Can we just extend GDQ by my personal time? No? Well, then at least I'll put my donation towards making GDQ just a little bit longer. We are so close on that Zelda link to the past. We have 60, we've raised almost 64000 out of 75000 Back to you. Yeah, so it's even if you know this mini game, doing it fast is just really, really hard. Um, and usually, either you get like good RNG and just click randomly, but if you just try to think, it takes forever. There we go. Finally. Got it. <laughs> First try, easy. First try. So if you do try and just randomly put it in, it's not a big deal. Uh, but at the same time, it's a lot faster to actually play the mini game because if I keep on quick loading, it's going to mess up and give me that little cutscene at the beginning, like you guys saw. So I go ahead and we talk to Void, and she's going to give us this machine. This machine is a reference to. Uh, Woody Guthier's guitar that has the sticker on it that says this machine kills fascists and on the stock of this machine it actually says well this machine kills commies uh, reference within the lore of Fallout um, within well within the game of Fallout the US fighting the communist uh, out again the lore will come up a little bit later with uh, another weapon, but it's not until late, until the run. So we have number 10 right there. So now we're gonna do the main quest for Yes Man, where we talk to all of the main factions that he wants us to talk to. So we have our weapons taken away, so I can't reload dash, so I just stop hop my way through here. And we're gonna talk to the head of the, we're gonna talk to the head of the White Glove Society, Mortimer. All we have to do is talk to him, say goodbye, and we know enough that we can just ignore them. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my pit boy, get my revolver, reload dash once quick. And now we're into the hey, hey, Tops Casino where we're gonna go say hi to Benny. Uh, Benny, if you guys don't know, is the main antagonist within yeah, this game. He's the one that shot you in the head and buried you uh, in the beginning cutscene. But we're just gonna talk to Swank here real quick. Swank is just gonna give us all of the 
weapons back as soon as they take them away. Get another level up here. Uh, put everything in the lockpick. Uh, I'm gonna grab toughness just for safety and take out Benny. Benny is gonna have our next unique weapon, which is the Maria. It has the picture of Our Lady. What is it? Our Lady of Guadalupe and the biblical, the biblical uh, Our Lady of the Apo Woman of the Apocalypse. Sorry. We're gonna do the top dialogue here. Seven of them. Do the second one, top one again, and we're gonna go ahead and leave. So Yes Man is the ending that we're going for right now. Yes Man is the fastest out of all of them, and we don't actually have to do too much during it. Yeah, we mentioned that, like Barana mentioned, that this, like, this is the first run at the AGDQ, which is not any person, but technically it's any person. We're still gonna do the same strats, but with picking up the weapons, so. Um, you choose the same ending as, as the fastest one. Yep, so now we're gonna make our way towards Mr. House. Mr. House is the big head of the... The big head of the, uh, the strip in all of New Vegas, basically. But we're gonna make a pit stop first to pick up the golden gloves, which are just hanging out up here, nice and easily accessible for us. And we're gonna make our way towards Victor, who's gonna bring us towards the penthouse. And we're just going to do a quick clip out of bounds, jump on top of this uh, potted plant, do a backwards uh, quick save quick load, hop our way over here, do another third person interaction to, uh, to activate this terminal, unlock the door, go into the control room, and we're going to go say hello to Mr. House, but we have to open up that real quick, uh, ignore the grenade, um, take him out, and put everything into lockpick. We're gonna get strong back so we can carry more. Go back to the penthouse. Quick save, quick load again out of bounds. And back in bounds. And then make our way towards the elevator. And now we can leave. Now typically in the any percent category, you would be going to say hi to the rest of the factions, but we are gonna go say hi to the uh, Amortas, which are just in the Gamora here. Uh, all we have to do is hey, tell him we're not going to give him our weapons and we can go ahead and leave. And now we're going to go say hi to the kings. The kings aren't one of the main factions, but he does. Uh, one of the kings does have a unique weapon that we want. And we're just going to take him out, make our way towards the vein graphs, which are just down the street, and we can leave. Uh, probably good for one donation. All right, we have a $10 donation from Scintilla saying, welcome to do Vegas, a place that makes you say, that's Vegas, baby. Perfect. So this is Figaro. It is, um, it's number 13 and it's named off uh, after the opera uh, Barbara Seville. And it is named after the uh, Barbara Barbara within that opera. We're gonna go say hi to the Van Graffs. We're gonna skip some of the dialogue here. We're gonna listen to her talk for a little bit, do some quick say quick loads to skip her dialogue because we can't go around because uh, these guards will instantly aggro if we go past them. I'm gonna wait here because if you wait, you can advance people's movement. Continue to quick say quick load to skip some dialogue and wait for that last one. There we go. Go ahead and talk to her. Ask if she has some work for us. And she gives us some work, so we're going to go outside. And the work that we're going to do is stand guard at the door. But this is where we're going to get number 14, the Van Graaff laser rifle. He has to go ahead and grab our stuff back to give it to us. And so we can either pick, we can only pick one. He offers us the laser and the plasma. So we are going to pick up the laser because it's actually lighter than the plasma, but the plasma does a little bit more damage. So right here... We're just going to go ahead and grab that laser. So we now have number 14. We're going to not guard the door because that's pretty slow. We're going to aggro Simon, make our way towards Freeside, and rebind everything. All right. Yeah, you need to fill that quest because otherwise NPCs will follow you and actually can solve block certain quests later on because they just cannot talk to you. Um, at the same time, you're doing some dialogue with someone else, so it's really bad, so that's why we do this way. Yep, and now we're going to make our way towards the Boomers, which are at Nellis Air Force Base. Um, they don't really like outsiders, 
So they <laughs> continue to bomb the whole area outside of the Air Force Base to make sure that we don't make our way in. But before we do that, we're going to make our way towards this shack over here, which has a unique weapon, which is a reference to a weapon in Fallout 2. Um, I don't remember the exact name for that. What is it? Um, I believe it's a reference to the Red Rider LE yep. BB gun in Fallout 2. Yep. And that's a reference to the Red Rider BB gun uh, from if you guys have ever seen A Christmas Story. Um, <laughs> the Red Rider BB gun, the you'll shoot your eye out. So we go ahead and talk to these boomer guards. And all we have to do here is talk to Pearl. And now we're done with the boomers. We don't have to do anything else with them. But I have to talk to her about getting those ants. We're going to sit here and wait for them to leave. Now that I'm hidden, I can grab Colonel Blackwell's key, which is in there. I want to grab that for a lock later on. Uh, I'll let you guys know whenever that comes up. And we're going to make our way towards the array over here. Typically, the quest in there is to grab the... Is to grab the... Sorry. Is to kill the ants within here. Um, you can electrocute them or you can take them out one by one. But we're just going to ignore that. We're going to try and dupe some more nades here. So I dupe some here. I'm going to check this body. This body might not have some. Oh, it does. Perfect. It's actually really good. Uh, turn off hardcore mode and make our way towards Thump Thump, which is a grenade launcher, which is a reference to the M79, which Thump Thump is the name that the service members gave to it. So let's see if I can get this clip. Oh, first try. Nice. That clip is tough. Yep. All right. So make my way towards Hidden Valley now. And we're going to talk, talk to the Brotherhood of Steel. Um, this is a little strat where they close the door behind you as soon as you go through here. So I'm going to quick save here, shoot a grenade over there. And that aggroed them enough to where... Oh, didn't actually count. That's why I double checked. There we go. So that should have, have aggroed them. Why is it not aggroing them? We're going to try one more time and then I'm going to do the backup strat. There we go. That definitely did it. There we go. Yep. So that causes us to be done with the Brotherhood of Steel now. So we can now fast travel towards Prim where we're going to go ahead and get lucky which is inside the Steve Bison Hotel behind a hard lock. And we want to grab this. Well, we were leveling up to make sure that we can have enough lockpick level to get this first try. So I'm at 77 right now. I believe it's 75 for hard lockpick, right, Salmon? Yeah. Yeah, 75. So we're going to do that. Uh, after this, we're going to fast travel to Good Springs, grab some Rad Scorpion eggs, and again, this is uh, probably a good time for some longer donations if you have those. I do. Thank you so much. Uh, so I had a $25 donation from Black Market Bingo saying GDQ is near and dear to my heart as someone who lost both of my grandfathers to cancer and as someone who's watched for years and eventually was inspired to pick up speed running myself. Had to donate during Fallout New Vegas, a.k.a. the Liam O'Brien simulator. I swear that guy voices every NPC but Benny in this game. Best of luck on the run, Banana Pegasus, and let's get that Deltarune Chapter 2 incentive. And we have a $25 donation from Mercurius59 saying, donating for my favorite Fallout game. Great job on the run so far, Banana. All righty. Thank you. Um, we're picking up Chance's knife right now, which is why we got the shovel. And we also picked up some rad scorpion eggs, which were just behind us. So I believe that is now number 18 that we have. And now we're going to go ahead and try and get love and hate. This one's a little tricky because if you, you can cause the weapon to go out of her hands if you use the nade launcher so i'm gonna drop a save down just real quick to make sure it doesn't get knocked out perfect that's really what we wanted to make sure it didn't get knocked out uh if it gets knocked out and you quick save you better go around looking and trying to find it 
Uh, so that's number 19. The love and hate is the reference to the 1955 movie uh, Night of the Hunter, where the uh, words love and hate are tattooed onto the knuckles of uh, Robert Mitchum. Alrighty, so we go to Red Rock. We're going to quick save, quick load a few times here to make sure that we got it for sure. Uh, in any percent, it's almost a gamble if you get red rock or not. Um, yeah, you need so to hit that, certain trigger points to actually make contact with them, and yeah, it can be tricky. Yeah, it's, it's pretty annoying, but it is required for the any percent category. And now we're going to go ahead and pick up... Oh, well, we're going to go ahead and turn in the rad scorpion eggs. But we have to wait until 6, because that's when Thorn opens. We stop hop all the way here, talk to Red Lucy again, turn in the eggs, and you might ask, why don't I just pick up all the eggs and turn it in at once? The eggs spawn as soon as you turn in the previous one. But this isn't entirely true, because there is one that is a little bit different, and it's the, uh, what is it, the Night Stalker eggs, right? Yeah. Yeah, the Night Stalker eggs. Um, we'll show you a little bit of duplication there later on. Uh, but for now, we're going to be doing the any percent, which is talking the yes man, telling him hey, he's all good. He can go into the lucky 38 now, take control of where, uh, what was it, uh, house was. And we're going to have a little cutscene coming up, which we can skip by waiting, quick saving, quick loading. And again, this is a longer cutscene, so donations would be perfect. Great, thank you so much. And I am seeing the donations coming in telling me this Liam O'Brien. So thank you for those donations and thank you for the correction there. Thank you, guys. Uh, we have a $100 donation from Abbott Braff that says, excited to donate for Fallout New Vegas, the game I've put both far too many and not enough hours into. Long time watcher and I'm so happy to be able to support such an awesome event. Have an amazing run, Banana, and let's finish all these great incentives to extend AGDQ for as long as we can. And we do have a $30 donation from Dr. Zoemg, PhD, saying New Vegas hype. All right, we can keep going. All right, we have a $50 donation from Jobert saying patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. And a $100 donation from Hot Pocket Ghost saying always love watching a Fallout run, grew up playing the games with my brother, and brings up some great memories. Good luck on the run and looking forward to the remaining runs. P.S. Happy birthday, Lean Pocket. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Alrighty. So what we did right there was we just skipped Yes Man's whole thing where he shows us what the new Securitrons can do. And there's a point where you can talk to him right in front of the tops telling him oh i know all of these factions uh, but it is a another it's a little bit faster to talk to him about those in here so we did that uh we said we don't care what happens to president kimball uh because that's another quest line that we would have gone down and now he wants us to go to el dorado substation and power the substation with a override chip And when you're in El Dorado substation, it's surrounded by NCR soldiers. If you're in there for too long, they can aggro. But if you're just in and out like this, where you just interact with the terminal and leave, they're not going to get mad at you. They might catch you in dialogue there, but it's not a big deal. I'm going to continue to reload dash, putting everything again into lockpick, get El Dorado Dry Lake, and we're going to be coming up on number 20, which is the Mysterious Magnum. The Mysterious Magnum is on the Lonesome Drifter here. We just do one quick punch, pick it up off of his body, and fast travel back to El Dorado substation. And we're coming up on Paladin Toaster right now, which is in Black Rock Cave. It has two or three Nightkins inside which we really got to be careful for because they have machine guns and they'll take us out pretty quick. We're not in and out as fast as possible. So I hop into here, do a quick reload dash right around the corner. I'm going to time stop to make sure they don't shoot me and pick up Paladin Toaster, time stop again so I can get a better angle on a reload dash out of here. You can see the exit right there, reload dash out. And that is number 21. 
For you guys that don't know, the Mysterious Magnum is the one that is used for the Mysterious Stranger within Bats. It's in four New Vegas and uh, three. So most of the 3D fallout shooters do have the Mysterious Stranger and that is the Magnum that he uses. And we're gonna make our way towards old lady Gibson, who's just sleeping in her bed. Uh, we're gonna take her out really quick. Sorry, old lady. Take up the big boomer and that's number 22. Do a quick reload dash over here and make our way towards Novak. Novak has everyone's favorite Boone inside, but we're not gonna go say hi to Boone, sadly. We're just gonna try and make our way in towards the, the store and grab the well grab that gun that gun is a 556 pistol it is used within blade runner and it's also a reference to fallout 2 to uh it's a reference to fallout 2 because players in fallout 2 called the 556 pistol that gun we're coming up on nelson if i'm right yep nelson Yep, Nelson has, um, well, if you want to explain that a little bit better, Sam, and the Legionnaire okay. in there. Yes, uh, Decanus, Legionnaire Decanus, that C who has a much unique machete for Liberator. I see the game crashed, nice. <laughs> yeah, another crash, it froze. It's fine, though. Just get that up really quick. So see, also, you can use uh, quick set, quick load to negate full damage, so since we keep seeing a lot, uh, banana can just go back to a very recent save. Yep, so I'm at the exact same point that I was. We're gonna be picking up the Liberator off of him. So right here, make our way out towards Nelson and reload dash our way out of here. We don't wanna go in front of the NCR barricade right there because we can get caught in dialogue. It's not a long dialogue, but it is a little bit annoying. So I'm just going to watch out for that. Uh, again, using quick saving and quick loading, we can negate fall damage completely. So no matter what height I'm at, I can just quick save, quick load, and it just stops my momentum and causes me to fix that. So that's also number 24. We're going to go into this cave here where we're going to grab the fire gecko eggs. And I'm going to time stop just for safety because these fire geckos can get pretty annoying. Again, like I said, you can't stop hop if you have your legs crippled. And these guys like to go straight for your legs. So another quick save, quick load out of bounds here. Hit a COC and make our way out towards the wasteland. And we're going to go ahead and pick up our next weapon coming up, which is the Rat Slayer. It's in Brock Flower Cave. The Rat Slayer on the stock of it has, it's 69 tallies of more rat skulls from, I'm assuming, the previous owner. And we don't want to use explosives here because if we do, we can cause the Rat Slayer to go around the room and it ends up being harder to find. So we're going to play it safe, use a melee weapon, uh, make sure that we don't mess that up. Also, uh, this place again. is like a maze because you can't really yeah. use COC warping back, so you have to like navigate through this place with all the rats <laughs> coming yeah. at you. If you drop, uh, if you drop down there, it ends up being a very hard time to get up. And like Salmon said, if you COC here, you're not going to go to the entrance. It's just somewhere completely random. And then after this, we're going to make our way out towards Wolfhorn Ranch. And at Wolfhorn Ranch, we're going to be picking up Chopper, which is a cleaver. And I think this would be another great time for donations. All right. Thank you so much. We have a $25 donation from Chiefy saying, Hey, Banana, you're doing great on the run. Love Fallout New Vegas and love the speedrunning community. Much love. And we have a $10 donation from Bridget saying, Loving this Fallout New Vegas run. I'm currently doing my first playthrough, and it's amazing how different this is. Let's beat cancer as we traverse the Mojave. Perfect. So this is Wolfhorn Ranch. It has this little shack right here. The chopper is just going to be on the stove. So it's going to be a nice, easy pickup right here. And there we go. It's number 26. And remember how I said 
for the Bleed Me Dry quest, we can't pick up eggs if we haven't turned in the previous one. So I have the fire gecko eggs right now, but we're going to make our way into Walking Box Cavern and do a little bit of duping where if I have 12 of these Night Stalker eggs, I'm able to have them turn into the pile of the eggs that Red Lucy wants. So I'm going to duplicate 12 right here. Perfect. And make my way out of here. These guys again go for legs and they'll continuously cripple you. So I stop on my way out of here. I could have reload dashed there, but I think I was close enough. And then fast travel my way towards Thorn. And we're gonna be picking up a weapon coming up soon after we turn in these eggs. Again, like I said, you can't turn in, well, you can't pick up the previous eggs, but you'll see in the top left here in a second. So I turn in the fire gecko eggs and she, I, she asks about the night stalker eggs. So I just wait a second and you'll see in the top left, it'll pop up. Pile of night stalker eggs added. And now I am on my way towards the Cassadors. And if you guys know Cassadors within this game, there's the ones that when they hit you, they make you woozy. It's a really annoying noise. So they're going to be a little bit of a hard time to get around. And we're going to make our way towards the uh, Ulyssid. Am I saying that right, Simon? Euclid, I think, or something like Euclid, that. I don't know. Yeah, Euclid Sea Finder. It's a... It's a little, it's debated. It's debated if it's a unique weapon. I'm saying it's a unique weapon for this run. I'm sorry, Anima. <laughs> I'm saying it's a unique weapon. We're just gonna go ahead and buy it off a of max right here for a thousand caps. It seems like a lot just for this little toy gun that he thinks he has. But this is actually a weapon that fires the Archimedes II laser down. Uh, it uses triangulation from the player, which is A, the gun, which is, oh, Archimedes 2, which is B, and C, which is the point where you want to shoot him. So that would be number 27 right now. We're going to make our way up towards Vault 32 by going through the top entrance. If I can get in here. Oh, boy. I went a little bit too high up. That's fine. Hop my way around here. There we go. We're gonna enter this cave. I'm gonna 180, reload dash into a vault. Oh, messed up that dash. There we go. We're gonna reload dash into vault 32, 34, sorry. And do a stair clip out of bounds to interact with the side of a door. Just right up here. Into the armory. And remember that Colonel Blackwell key that I picked up at the boomers? This is where we're gonna use it to go ahead and grab the pulse gun but right after we pick up the All-American, which is just sitting out right there. The All-American is a reference to the 82nd Airborne Division, which had troops from all 48 states recognized at the time. And the Pulse Gun is just an EMP. So again, that is number 28 and 29. We do a quick save, quick load here. Just go out of bounds and we just get plopped right in front of the door to the wasteland. I'm gonna quick save, oh, I'm gonna reload dash over here. And this is where one of the new strats that I actually implemented yesterday. We're gonna infinite dash here. Oop, messed that up, it's fine. I ended up getting uh, a PB yesterday, so that's a, another world record. What was the time again, Salmon? 45, uh, 38, I think. Yep. So just by using this, it saves so much time. Yeah, it's and pretty far and infinite dashing is just way faster than just reload dashing to there. Yeah, it's, it's insane. So just reload dashing there ends up making it a lot slower. So we're just going to hop in here, pick up the CZ-57 Avenger, uh, the successor to the CZ-53 personal machine gun. Make our way up here. And now we're going to go towards Ruby Hill Mine to pick up those uh, Casador eggs. 
And while we're on our way towards the castle or eggs, this would be another good time for donations. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We have a $20 donation from Texas Supernova saying Fallout New Vegas got me through a really rough time in my life. I'm in a much better place now and can afford to donate. Love this series and loving this run. Thank you so much. We are so glad that you are in a good place now. Thank you so much for your generosity. And we have a $25 donation from Adam the Feverish saying a Fallout New Vegas all unique weapons run. Ain't that a kick in the head? All right. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to go make our way towards the uh, Casador eggs. I want to time stop here so they don't melee with me and you guys don't get that woozy noise that they give you. And we're going to make our way towards Jacobstown and go into Charleston's cave, which is going to have Oh Baby, which is a super sledge, and, uh, super sledgehammer. And it does fair about a fair amount of damage, as most super sledge do. Uh, mostly wielded by super mutants, which this whole town is completely controlled by super mutants. But they're friendly, so we don't have to worry about them too much. And the cave is just over there, so I gotta make my way through some of this terrain over here. There we go. And now we're going to be inside. Again, caves are very difficult to go through. Uh, if I take one wrong turn, I can end up being completely lost. There are a lot of caves in this run, so it's kind of oh, yeah. easy to confuse them as well. So I just stop out past here. And the sledgehammer is just going to be chilling right here. I'm going to pull up my grenade launcher here. Take some, take out some of these guys just so they don't melee me whenever I'm trying to clip out of bounds. One more. I have enough nades and stim packs where I'm not too worried about it. Might be worried about the stim packs though. I can probably do some a little bit later on, but for right now we're we're good. Quick, uh, quick save, quick load out of bounds so I can hit a coc to go to the front, and now I'm gonna make my way to Thorn. At Thorn, I'm going to turn in the Casador eggs, and then she's going to go ahead and tell us to pick up Deathclaw eggs, which is in Deadwind's Cavern, which is a whole cave that is completely filled with just Deathclaws, and it is absolutely terrifying, but we're not going to do that right now. We're going to go ahead and make our way towards some different unique weapons for right now. So right now, we're going to make our way towards uh, Cottonwood Cove. So we want to go to Wolfhorn Ranch, and this is another place where I implement uh, infinite dashing into. And all right, that's perfect. Yeah, infinite dashing has a very, very tight window. And later on, near the dam, I don't know if I'm going to do it during this run for the dam, but um, if your radiation is high enough, your agility is down, and it causes it to really mess up. So the timing becomes a lot more difficult, but it's not yeah. too big of a deal. Yeah, because uh, HPT affects your reload speed, so the timing will be different every time it changes, so it's a bit finicky there. Yeah. We're going to make our way in towards the basement here. We're going to go ahead and kill Logan. Logan is going to have the key for the uh, the fire station, which is going to have another unique weapon in it. Oh boy, we're almost done, guys. <laughs> uh, it's going to have another unique weapon in it. It's Knock Knock. It's Fire Axe made completely out of bones. So let's go ahead and hop our way up here. And it's just... Chilling in the stall right here. Pick that up. I'm gonna grab some of this rat right away just to be safe. Time stop. Ooh, come on. There we go. I gotta make sure that I have my cursor within the mini map because if I don't, it won't let me pull up that little dialog box and it'll mess up completely. Uh, reload dash past here. I'm gonna do another one around the corner here. And we're gonna make our way towards the Gobi Campaign Sniper Rifle. The Gobi Campaign Sniper Rifle is, of course, based off of the Gobi Campaign within the game. 
Uh, so Fallout lore, the Gobi campaign, I can't remember exactly what fight it was, but like I mentioned earlier, it was the United States against communists, and this weapon was used during it. So it's a very hard lockpick. Again, why I needed to get my lockpick skill all the way to 100. If I can get this, oh, first try. Make my way over here and reload dash. We want to get in that little hut over there. And we're going to go ahead and pick up the Recompense of the Fallen, which is a unique dog tag weapon. And it just has a whole bunch of dog tags uh, tied around it, which we're going to be using pretty much as knuckle busters. And after this, we're going to fast travel towards Deadwind's Cavern. Well, next to Deadwind's Cavern. Go inside and say hello to the Death Claws. I think we have time for one or two donations. Thank you so much. How about this $500 donation from Falcon Punch? This Fallout New Vegas run brings back so many memories as a developer on the project. Hey. So humbled by the relentless positivity and passion of this community. Cancer's days are numbered for sure. This goes out to my dad, who we lost in 2003. Miss you every day. And I also want to say we are so close to $2.1 million overall. So close. We're going to hit it during this run, I believe in y'all. And we've raised just over 71000 out of the 75000 for Zelda Link to the Past. Bonus any percent run. Perfect. So that was Mercy. That's a grenade launcher, uh, which we're going to be using later in the run. It's pretty much a full auto grenade launcher. <laughs> It fires so many grenade launchers at once, and that's why we end up duplicating all of those uh, nades to begin with. We're gonna keep on hopping our way past here and quick save, quick load through this little stalactites and stalagmites. And once I get past that death claw, oh no. Oh, we're good. Oh no, we're not. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I got out, we're good. Nice. You got it. Oh, they're still there. All right, we're good now. <laughs> um, I am out of stim packs. That's not good. Um, we're going to go towards Thorn now and turn in the Death Claw eggs. And then we're going to go into Camp Karen and take the weapons from there. So stop, hop, pass all these people and we're gonna go ahead and talk to red lucy and now we're gonna get another unique weapon here after turning in all those eggs we completed the quest and now we have the dinner bell as you'll see on the top left right there oh i paused sorry about that there we go sorry about that all right um but yeah we'll let me put it into medicine all right so we just turned in the unique weapon to get dinner bell, and now we're going to make our way towards Camp McCarran. We're almost done. Once we go into Camp McCarran, we're going to be looking for two different people, but first we're going to go ahead and duplicate some more stim packs because I have absolutely none. There's a safe place right here that almost spawns it consistently. Let's hope it's there. No. There we go. Perfect. And we have 82 of those, so I'm going to try... Oh, I forgot to put on hardcore mode. Typically, I don't have this many times that I have to uh, use stim packs, but it's fine for right now. So I'm going to drop some of the unnecessary weapons um, just so it makes it a little bit easier later on. Uh, I'm going to drop the grenade launcher as well, just because we're going to be using Mercy here. And let's bind that to three. And let's look for some of the people. So we have... Where are you? There he is. So we want Corporal Sterling right here. We're going to take Lalu Lechunga. Sorry, I don't, I'm not that good at French. I apologize. Um... And let's see where Buster is. We're looking for Little Buster. There he is. Little Buster is very easy to tell the difference from because he's always in that darker metal armor. Oh boy. Uh, we're gonna take the cram opener and I believe that should be 39 now, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yep. A lot of chaos going on right now. Yeah, they are all pissed off and you need to kind of get to a safe place to faster all the way and it's sometimes hard. Yep. And we're just about at the end of the game. We're going to talk to Yes Man, make our way towards the dam. I'm not going to infinite dash at the dam. I'm going to play kind of safe. Um, but at the very, uh, we're coming up on the very end. So just a few more donations uh, before we get to the end. All right, well, we have a $50 donation from Anonymous saying, I have hundreds upon hundreds of hours in Fallout New Vegas, and I, I, I have no idea what's going on here. Well done, Pan Banana Pegasus. But what did go on is not only have we crossed 2.1 million, we've also crossed $2.101 million. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you so much for all of your donations. And thank you guys for all the generous donations. We really do appreciate it. So this is the dam section of the game. This is the final fight, but you guys will also notice you're only at 39, not out of 40. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the last unique weapon at the very, very end, where we go ahead and talk to the Legate who has Blade of the East on him. So we're gonna reload dash past these guys. We have to hit a trigger there to have him spawn. And there he is. Instead of talking to him, in the any percent route, we talk to him and we uh, try and talk him down so we don't have to do this. But now we have Mercy, we have enough grenades and stim packs where it doesn't really matter. We can kind of just spam through this. I accidentally pulled out Pushy. I spammed it too many times. He's trying to run away. He doesn't really get that far. There he is. So we're going to take him out. Take out a couple of his goons as well. Pick up Blade of the East, and I'm full, so I'm gonna drop that. Hopefully I have enough. Yep, we're good. We have to take out some of the guards for it to allow us to finish the game. Yeah, because and the NCR will spawn when you have enough enemies here. Yep. And I'm stop hopping right to the end. This is where we talk to uh, the colonel, and all we have to do is tell him we don't want to fight you, but Season oh, General eight. Lee Oliver, I'm mixing up uh, Fallout 3 <laughs> in New Vegas. Uh, so this is General Lee Oliver. Uh, we talk to him, and we're gonna have the Securitrons fight for us. We're just gonna spam stim packs while the Securitrons take these guys out. They'll, they'll win almost every single time. We'll talk to Yes Man and get ready on time. And time. So, um, let's enable... If I can type. Can't spell either. There we go. Uh, if you guys don't know, this is Ron the Narrator. He's the one who does all of these. Uh, it actually puts you in front. And that is all 40 unique weapons. So that is it for me. I do want to say thank you guys so much for having me. I want to give a huge shout outs to Radioactive03, who wasn't able to be here, but I wouldn't be able to do any of this without him. I got to give a really huge shout out to Noob Salmon as well. It's been a huge help throughout speedrunning for me. Uh, everyone who comes up on this list, uh, I got to thank them as well. They're amazing and have helped me through everything uh, within speedrunning. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't be here without them. They're just amazing and fantastic people. Do you have anything, Simon? Yeah, thanks for having me. And also thank you for the community as well. Uh, Khan Cobra, who made this category, uh, and all the other great runners and if you want to join our Discord, and if you're interested in runs we have uh, different channels for different fallout games and a lot of great people in the community gonna help you with runs we have a lot of guides so if you're interested then feel free to join yeah check out the community they are awesome people and everyone is willing to help uh thank you guys so much i hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your gdq shout outs to chronos and shay who are coming up soon thanks guys
that's exactly how I remember Fallout New Vegas. That was exactly how my first playthrough went and everything. So the music that you heard during that game, uh, we were playing different music underneath. You can find the names of all of those uh, songs scrolling down at the bottom of the screen right here. So uh, if you want to figure out what those were, maybe add them to your own playlist, feel free to go ahead and take a look right there at the bottom of the screen and 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 um that wasn't there before are are you all are you all seeing what i'm seeing over there on the screen but after sekiro and and before uh the the bonus game of of delta rune are you seeing that it is that wasn't there before portal 2 we have added another game to the schedule portal 2 by m sushi an inbounds run of portal 2 it's just there it is there because we have hit over $2.1 million and we have done all this stuff. It is now there. It is going to be later today, just added to the schedule right now, Portal 2 out of nowhere. All right, and uh, so... Stretch your legs, hydrate, but don't close that tab. We are going to be right back. You're watching Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 online. Now let's hear a word from Power Up Audio. Power Up Audio is an indie sound studio from Vancouver, Canada. They have worked on such games such as Celeste and Cadence of Hyrule. In the past, they have handled audio on site here at GDQ, but for AGDQ 2022 online, they designed some of the sounds for this new GDQ overlay system that you've been enjoying all week. Check them out. Check them out at powerupaudio.com and the upcoming Tunic at tunicgame.com. And uh, 
I just, I have one more donation that I'm going to read right here. It is a $100 donation from Naomi Uyama saying, can I embarrass my brother on air? Good job, Mike. I put that there because Mike's been talking in my ear for the past couple hours. And this is the end of my shift here at AGDQ 2022. I want to thank everybody involved, both behind the scenes and in front of the scenes and all the runners and all of y'all for donating and making this event so memorable. My name is Bobby Black Wolf, but don't worry. Cartridge Blowers is going to be coming in to take you through Halo and the rest of the afternoon. But right now, we have an interview. Kung Fu Fruit Cup is going to be interviewing someone about the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick Online 2022. I am Kung Fu Fruit Cup, and I am here with another member of uh, PCF, or those working with PCF. Today, we are joined by Dr. Ayushi Uberoi. And uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's wonderful to be here. Good. Yeah, it's wonderful to have you and talk to you. I'm very excited about that. We've been chatting a little bit for the past few minutes, and it's been fun. Um, so, uh, Dr. Ayushi works at the University of Pennsylvania with, uh, it looks like, individuals susceptible to UVB-induced skin cancers. So, I know that you have a research project with that. Can you tell us um, just kind of some general information about what that is and what it's about? Sure. So, actually, uh, the so I'm a postdoctoral fellow. I work in Dr. Elizabeth Grice's lab. And uh, this is more like an apprenticeship in which I'm being trained to like start my own lab. And um, so the project that I came up with was so most people worldwide are exposed to high amounts of UV. And UV-induced skin cancer and malignancies are like the most common skin conditions. And it's actually the highest amount of skin cancer, like in the cancer statistics, so high that it's not even included in the list many times. But what I was, um, what what is the focus of my studies is that I look at how UV exposure can change the microbiome. So the skin lives, can be thought of like as an ecosystem. So it has its skin cells, but it's continuously in contact with different microbes. And typically the approach has been like, we study one microorganism, for example, like COVID, right? So it's one microorganism and how it impacts um, what we call the host or the human health. But what I study is how the millions of microbes that are on the skin, how do they interact with each other? Then how do they interact with the skin? And if you throw in another, another hit, which would be UV exposure, how does that change anything? And can we use that information then to either identify specific changes that we can use for diagnostics? Or can we actually use products that microbes make to treat cancer? So uh, it's a very complex problem, but uh, this project is um, sort of like starting this new direction for me at least. Yeah. Wow. That's <laughs> awesome to learn about. Like I've done a little bit of research more so on like the microbiome in your gut because it's, yeah. you know, so heavily related to diet and, and how diverse that is down there as well. And so I didn't even think about it just on your skin in general which makes complete sense. Um, so I kind of wonder, like, if, if you're okay talking about it, what kind of research have you found so far with how these, how the microbiome on your skin, like, wh what have you found with it in relation to UV? Sure. So in terms of my work, which led to this work, um, the work in the gut field is actually pretty, um, it's at a much advanced stage compared to skin because gut, and probiotics and things like that have been studied for a while. So um, when I started uh, my postdoc in Dr. Grice's lab, we first wanted to just see, does the skin microbiome even do anything? And that's what uh, the large focus of my research has initially been. And what I found was that microbes are actually very helpful, especially those that just live in synergy with us. So uh, those microbes actually even make the skin better. And um, so like the work that I've published so far actually focuses on how microbes can improve the skin. 
And so far, since the Foundation Fellowship started, which was last year, what I've been focusing on is that there was not enough documentation or people haven't looked at it in a lot of depth that what UV is doing to the microbes. And I used uh, an animal model. So I used uh, mouse models and treated them with UV. And then I'm trying to figure out what changes are happening to the communities. So this is quite funny because when I was like telling my uh, colleagues about my research, they're like, well, it's UV. It's going to kill everything. <laughs> but but that's not what's going on, right? Like, right. obviously, that's not what's happening. So what I'm finding is that, sure, UV can possibly cause uh, damage to certain microbes, but then others take over. So it's like a whole complex interplay going on. So it's quite interesting. Like, instead of looking at it from the one organism perspective, from the community perspective, it's very cool. Yeah, absolutely. And now I'm just like, so what do I what do I need to put on my skin to make it <laughs> safer, better? I'm so curious. Maybe we can talk about that after. Um <laughs> I would say use a uh, sunscreen. Right, of course. Yeah, I think that, that makes sense. That is like common knowledge. Yes, everybody, please make sure you're wearing sunscreen. Um <laughs> but like so so then this is a really fascinating subject, but I wonder what got you into this in the first place. Like what spurred your research into this? So um I actually did my bachelor's in engineering. And uh, when I was doing my bachelor's, at that point, I got this fellowship to come to the United States. Uh, It's called the Karana Fellowship. It's awarded in the name of Nobel laureate Dr. Hergovin Karana, who Mm -hmm. discovered really seminal structures of the DNA. And I started, um, I came to University of Wisconsin-Madison and started working in cancer research. And then I did my PhD there. And initially, the interest was just that cancer is a fascinating problem. And what I actually studied for my PhD was how viruses can cause cancer. Oh. Um, and I specifically studied on papil- papillomaviruses that um, are typically associated with cervical cancer. Uh, but in the later years, it's been thought that they also contribute to skin cancer. And I found that they can do so in conjunction with UV exposure. So that's what my PhD research was on. And then I thought that, oh, that's an interesting observation. What do what happens if you take it in the context of the whole microbiota? So uh, that's why I'm interested in this problem. Also, it would be eventually if we could get some meaningful answers, microbiome can give like very low cost therapeutics. So uh, it would be a much cheaper strategy to preventing cancer. In fact, like certain algae species, like when I talk about microbiome, a lot of people often think it's just bacteria, but it's like viruses, it's algae, it's like all microbes. So certain algae even acts as natural sunscreens. So there's like so much, it's just mind blowing. (laughs) I've never thought of this before. That's really cool. Yeah, this is, um, I'm I'm very interested in this right now. That's really cool. So I wonder how that will then translate into like products that people can, people can do maybe like, maybe things work from the inside out to like build up your skin or like, I don't know. I, this is, this is all your field, but (laughs) <laughs> um, I love the idea of this. This is really cool. Yeah. And the best thing, I don't know if it's the best thing, but there's a lot of opportunity for exploration because I don't think people have looked in the context of the skin um, deeply enough to answer some of these questions, yeah. which to me is both fascinating and mind boggling because skin is like the first line of defense. Right. So we're covered, like that's the first thing that is exposed to anything. So uh, it is amazing to me that we still have these opportunities. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, that is, it is pretty wacky that, that in is like such a common thing on people and it gets treated for so many different things. And yet there's like not a lot of study on this. So it's really yeah. great to hear that this is something that you're looking into and working on. And I'm sure a lot of people out there will appreciate that, especially those who have had, you know, those, those cancer scares and all of that um, and gone sure. through a lot of things. Now, I feel like, you have some really personal experience with this within recent times. Is that something you'd like to share? Oh, of course. So um, when I got the Prevent Cancer Foundation, which was not in the ideal times, uh, we were in the middle of a pandemic. We right. didn't know what's <laughs> going to happen. And uh, um, 
so at that point, when I got the fellowship, uh, we were very excited um, that I had the opportunity to do this work. And then unfortunately, around that same time, I was diagnosed with early stage endometrial cancer. And uh, that to me was crazy because, you know, uh, sometimes it's like hard to think about that, oh, I'm a cancer researcher. I'm surrounded by the people who know everything, both from the clinical as well as basic research perspective. And then uh, I'm 31 years old and oh my God, what? What do you mean I have cancer? So um, that was something that happened in the pandemic and uh, it changed my whole worldview about the disease. Uh, But more importantly, I think it like motivated me further that this is an important problem that I am studying and that no one is immune to it, right? So, right. Um, so wouldn't it be awesome if we could, like most of the efforts are like directed towards treating cancer when it has already set in. But what would be awesome is to have prevention methods, so better diagnostics. So, for example, in the case of endometrial cancer, there are actually not that many effective diagnostics um, uh, because it may or may not be caught on a pap smear, which is the most common way to diagnose a reproductive problem. And uh, then, like, do we... It's a more internal cancer, so the imaging methods are also not advanced enough. So... Uh, I think for me, it opened like a new journey that, sure, we'll work and manage through the disease conditions. There are awesome people who are working on that. But it motivated me that, hey, I want to focus on like preventing and coming up with better methods for treating people and just preventing the cancer itself. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, Like whenever you go through personal experience like that, it's obviously going to give you more motivation to drive because you know what it's like. You know, like it, you, you just, like you said, it was like, it changed your whole world. Like it, it, something will click in your brain and you're like, oh, okay. Like I, not only have I been studying it, but I really get it. Yeah. And uh, often from the researcher's perspective. So my work, we use very powerfully, we use animal models because that is our only way to study uh, cancer and other diseases in a way that we could get meaningful treatments out there. And but sometimes when we are like um, looking at it from that perspective and we're so involved in it, even though we're aware of the statistics, I'm, for example, not a person who works directly with patients. That would be something an oncologist or a clinician does. Uh, But I think for me, it really humbled me and humanized the diseases in general, like not just cancer, but even infectious diseases that. We're all susceptible to them. And this is an important thing to do. And I think in a way it strengthened my life's purpose that I want to commit towards um, making the world better by maybe even contributing some knowledge, right, towards some disease. So that was probably the most impactful thing that came out. Uh, Someone was telling me that, hey, that's a bright side of looking at it. Well, unfortunately, there's no bright side to getting any disease. Right. <laughs> you get it. It's going to be there. Nobody's going to be able to say anything to make you feel better, but you need something to get out of bed. Right. So for me, it was this that, okay, this is a separate issue that I need to deal with health wise, but I also have this purpose that I want to commit, like be committed to. So, um, so it's been quite life altering. <laughs> yeah. Sure it and- has but I'm so glad that it's, that it's helped and aided with your research in your, like, you know, it's just, you can have that relatability if you ever work with people, um, or you're able, you know, able to reach out to anyone, you know, it, it helps you understand and helps them understand. And so like, I'm really sorry that you've had to go through it. Um, but it's really well, I appreciate it. amazing to see your drive and perspective on it and like how much harder it's making you work and all that. And so, and it's good to see you doing well right now. And obviously we hope the absolute best for you and your research. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you for chatting with us. I really appreciate it. Uh, again, this is Dr. Uh, Ayushi. She's been wonderful. <laughs> it's been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, of course. Um, I'm so- extremely thankful to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For supporting. But um, 
as my lab mates and I, we've talked about it. The awesome games done quick fellowship is like the best thing and the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. I'm not just a prevent cancer foundation fellow. I'm the awesome games done quick fellow. Yeah. It's the yeah. coolest thing. And I cannot stress and how thankful I am. Like th- this is a lot of money, which is supporting my salary and my work. And I hope opportunities like this exist for all researchers. Uh, this goes a long way because then it means that the funding which comes for this, um, we can use other fundings for our research and uh, instead of having to pay my salary. And right. this is a tremendous opportunity. In fact, through the fellowship, I even get to take additional training courses, um, which would not have been possible otherwise. So this is really going to help in uh, setting up my future lab, which will study how to use microbiota-based therapeutics to treat diseases. Awesome. <laughs> well, great. Thank you so much for letting us know about all of that information and about the microbiome and, and um, all of the work that you're doing. It's been an absolute pleasure. and. Um, Thank you for much. Uh, thank you so much again for talking with me. Oh my gosh, I think I've said thank you too many times today. <laughs> but um, have a wonderful rest of your day, and uh, we are going to hand it back up so that we can continue on with the marathon and see some more awesome runs. Thank you Sounds so much. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs>